The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord, be on my mind, be on my lips, and in my heart. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowd, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. And while everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder said to him, came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? And he answered, An enemy has done this. And his slaves said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? And he replied, No. If you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, First, collect the weeds, tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. And he proposed to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, yet when full grown, it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush, and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. And he spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowd in parables, and he spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what was laid hidden from the foundation of the world. Then... Dismissing the crowds, he went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. And he said in reply, He who sows good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. And just as weeds are collected and burnt up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin, and all evildoers. And they will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. And then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The gospel of the Lord. One of the great subjects of philosophy of much of human effort has been to explain our world and the source of good and evil and to come to terms with that. Today's parable addresses that very issue. Jesus tells us, and it's old-fashioned religion, right? that there is a devil. He does incite, incite people to do evil. But there is a judgment at the end of the age. And right now we live in a time where there are both weeds and wheat. And it still leaves us with a very difficult dilemma. Why does God, who is all good, not destroy evil? Why does God, who is all good, allow it to happen and hurt us so much? and to cause so much turmoil. 
this parable tells us that God is allowing him both to exist for a while until the end, but doesn't really tell us why. So I had to dig deeper in Scripture, and I found another passage. I've known it for a long time. <laughs> came to mind. But it's a beautiful passage by St. Peter in his second letter, chapter 3. Oh, my Lord, someone moved my bookmark. <laughs> Must have been me. <laughs> I always blame my faults on others. Chapter 3, second letter of Peter. He's saying, talking about the end of the world and the coming judgment known as the day of the Lord and the promise of God to do that. And he says, but there is one thing, my dear friends, that you must never forget, that with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not being slow in carrying out his promises. That's to come at the end of time, as some people think he is. Rather, he is being patient with you, wanting nobody to be lost and everybody to be brought to repentance. First reading today tells us that God loves all his people, the weeds and the wheat, and that the wheat came first. The weeds came later by the influence of the devil, but we in our free choice follow that. But this time, before the coming judgment and God's delay that we can't explain is because of God's desire that all people be saved and that we in this time endure that very great suffering living in the midst of evil but yet not succumbing to it. St. Paul tells us that we actually share in the sufferings of Christ who on the cross suffered at the hands of evil in order to show the depth of his love we too in this world, while we are here, are to do that same thing. But more so, Scripture tells us that where evil abounds, God's grace abounds all the more. And God would not allow this coexistence of good and evil during this difficult time unless he knew that with his grace we could survive it. But not only survive it, it can make us stronger better Christians. There's a famous story preachers like to use about the fishing industry. And it was the cod fishermen who would collect and catch cod and at one point ship them from one coast to another coast. And at first they would kill and freeze the cod, but by the time it got to its destination, because travel was slow in those days, the fish would taste flat. And it would be mushy, not flaky. And so someone got the idea of putting the fish alive in tanks with seawater and shipping them that way. But still, when they got to their destination, they were flat, tasting, and mushy, not flaky. Someone later then got another idea to take a catfish or two who live in both salt water and fresh water, some catfish, the natural enemy of the cod, and they put a few catfish in the tank. And as they were transported, the catfish would continue to snap at the cod. And when they arrived at their destination and were eaten, they tasted fresh, and they were flaky. That little bit of agitation in the tank kept the cod to be stronger and more what they were intended to be. Perhaps that's one of the purposes that God knows evil can ha result in while we live in this world. When we face that evil, we can give up or we can recognize this might be an opportunity to be even a better Christian. For what grace is there, what credit is to you if you love those who love you? But Jesus commands us to love our enemies and teaches that it's especially important to do that. There's a famous story of John Paul II when 
he was shot. And they caught his assassin, but there were many theories about who hired the assassin, the attempted assassin. And they asked John Paul II, don't you want to know who was behind this? And he said, I already know who's ultimately behind it. In other words, the devil. And John Paul cared to pursue it no further, but met with the man and forgave him. And they later on carried a, a correspondence throughout their life. And when John Paul later became sick, would still receive a letter from this person who shot him, wishing him well. This is an example of how we Christians are called to respond to evil. It happens in our families, it happens in our workplaces, it happens in our societies, that we do encounter weeds. And we are called to recognize we all have an enemy, and we shouldn't be overly upset. This is hard to preach. We should be upset with the evil, but we shouldn't be overly upset because in the end, good will triumph. But during this time when the two coexist, we should become the best Christian, showing more love, more forgiveness, working harder to be a light and to reconcile our brother and sister because the weeds and the wheat are brothers and sisters, all children, really, of God. And so this is a challenge for all of us. In our families, the times when we have give others the silent treatment, perhaps we're not called to do that. Perhaps we're sh called to show them greater love. In our societies, when we look at the many divisions and enemies and things that we think we have, and the social situations and the crime, maybe our call is to reach out in greater love, and to forgive and to rehabilitate, to work in those areas where there is the most problem what we might want to call evil, and become a brighter light, inviting all to goodness. The other parables talk about a mustard seed becoming a great shelter for all people, for the birds. The church, society, can do much better, showing God's love and support and inviting others to conversion. And we shouldn't simply not act and try to isolate ourselves from these difficult situations. Because that's what the other parable is, the leaven. The leaven is meant to be an agent of change in the world. Leaven doesn't sit on the sidelines and say, oh, I'm going to be good and go to heaven. It's probably better than nothing. <laughs> but it does try to continue to show God's love in this difficult world. And so let us take heart and accept this challenge that where evil abounds, God's goodness is there all the more. And if we are open to it, let us have the courage to stand against it and to be a child of the light so that others may see that goodness. And when we do that, sometimes we don't see results, do we? Sometimes we do suffer much. But that's what God calls us to do. Because oftentimes our good witness our standing for right in a difficult situation has effects we can't see. If one person is just discouraged from joining in with the evil, we've made a difference. But we can't see that difference. And so let us trust that when evil and good are battling, which this is a battle, we can join that battle on the side of good sharing in the sufferings of Christ, allowing him to work through us, bringing more love, more forgiveness, so that we can become like that mustard seed and as a church and a world provide greater shelter for more. We can be the leaven in the world and make the whole batch rise.